today the start of may you're gonna join the rest of the world to commemorate the world press freedom day we have the report in our bulletin today it is africa today thank you so much for joining us my name is nahabe kajura and in the headlines <laughs> The National Environment Authority appeals to the people to avoid exposing themselves to pollution. And the Federation for Democratic Change cautions government on unnecessary borrowing and unclear accountability. And Bobby Wine Bradley's opposition in new pre-reform fight. And in Somalia, elections to hold as President Famajo drops term extension. And in Africa today, sports, KCC scored two vital away goals past Maroon in first leg Uganda Cup round of 16. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Now let's have the news in detail. Today, the National Environment Authority, Kampala Capital City Authority and Makere University joined the rest of the world to celebrate the 15th Annual Air Quality Awareness Week of 2021. Our reporter has more. This year's theme was health air important for everyone. Air pollution contributes over 7 million premature deaths annually. The World Health Organization estimates that over 80% of the population in urban centers are exposed to ambient pollution levels above the health guidelines. The, the theme for this year is health air important for everyone. The Air Quality Week is an opportunity to raise awareness about impact on air quality on human beings, economies and environment, as well as the actions that people can take to reduce the health risks, also to improve on the air quality. Globally, we have figures which are normal. Seven million, seven million people die and the deaths associated to poor, health, poor air quality. And the population, the World Health Organization estimates that over 80% of the populations monitored in urban areas are exposed to ambient air, uh, which is polluted, including us in Kampala. In Uganda, we estimate that 30,000 people die annually due to air quality related illnesses. The ambient air pollution levels uh, that were monitored in the most of the urban areas tend to be about five times more than the general guidelines that nature gives. Uh, but in Uganda, about 30,000 people die annually due to air pollution related diseases. To support the efforts of reducing air pollution, Kampala Capital City Council Authority is developing a Kampala Clean Air Action Plan with support from United Nations Environment Program. To support the efforts of reducing air pollution, KCCF is developing a Kampala Clean Air Action Plan with support of the United Nations Environmental Program, NEDILEP, to guide coordinated activities for cleaning air and spell out activities aimed at reducing air quality. National Environment Management Authority appeals to public to avoid exposing to pollution while minimizing activities that contribute poor air quality. Thank you so much, our reporter. Now, the Forum for Democratic Change has expressed concern about the country's debt burden, which is imposed on Ugandans, yet it's spent through unclear circumstances. Let's have the report. Uganda projects the public debt will surge to nearly half its annual economic output by June this year, driven by fresh borrowing to fund financial stimulus packages for its COVID-hit economy. The country's debt is seen rocketing to 49.9% of GDP by end of June, up from 41% the same month last year, according to the Ministry of Finance 2021-2022 fiscal year budget proposal. Addressing journalists at their party headquarters in Kampala, Deputy Secretary General Harold Kaija said government continues to borrow money with unclear expenditures, yet the burden of paying back loans goes back to Ugandans. Some of them use that money to do their own business. Some of them fix that money and get interest out of it. Some of them use that money and buy stock. So that by the time it is used, for its purpose, 
they have benefited, but you, the taxpayer, is paying a lot of interest. FDC also expressed a concern on the new taxes imposed on Ugandans, such as the tax on gold and fuel, saying the tax burden is too high for Ugandans to manage. This kind of cheating, <laughs> Ugandans must then know to this. Ugandans are, are, are captives, who even know that they are captives. And I think they've been moving using this kind of ignorance that is actually uh, put in this country because they make sure that they curtail any kind of access to information. So we want us as the FDC, we want to say no, ask those in power to revise this kind of tax. Or tell us who benefits from this gold. In commemoration of the World Press Freedom Day today, FDC has asked government to create an environment for journalists that allows them to practice their profession freely without any hindrances. Narugo Muyingo, Africa Today. Well, thank you so much, our reporter Narugo. Now, the National Unity Platform leader Robert Chagulanyi Center Mo Elias Bobby Wine has reached out to all opposition political parties to discuss the aftermath of 2021 general elections and how they can move forward. Our reporter has more. In a letter addressed to Forum for Democratic Change, President Patrick Oboy Amriat, Alliance for National Transformation leader Major General Mugisha Montu, and the Democratic Party President General Mr. Nobat Mao, Bobby Wine noted that the recent concluded elections was the most violent in the history of Uganda and that the forces of change need to forge a way forward. Mr. Joel Senyonyi, the National Unity Platform spokesperson, yesterday said that they had so far received responses from the two leaders of FDC and Alliance for National Transformation and they have scheduled to meet them this week to take the discussions forward. Ms. Alice Alasso, the head of finance and administration at Alliance for National Transformation, said that they had received the letter and are open to meeting the National Unity Platform leadership as a gesture of working together as change-seeking forces. Although Mr. Senyon said Democratic Party had not responded, Mr. Mao had acknowledged the receipt of the letter while appearing on an NBS political show and promised to respond to the same. Mr. John Chikonyogo, the deputy spokesperson of Forum for Democratic Change, acknowledged the receipt of the National Unit Platform letter, but said he did not have details about this party's position on the letter. The 2021 general elections was married by violence and arrests of the opposition presidential candidates. Many supporters of candidates Amriat and Chagulani died during this period, allegedly at the hands of brutal security operatives. This is not the first time the opposition has attempted to forge a common working agenda and a platform. Two days to the elections in January, opposition political party heads met at Hotel Africana in Kampala to discuss what would happen after the elections. The details of the meeting were never made public. Thank you so much, our reporter. Now, today you're going to join the rest of the world to commemorate the World Press Freedom Day. However, journalists express their challenges, including security agencies, brutality, and low pay by employers. Our reporter has more. Uh, I think the laws need to be implemented. I, I shouldn't say that we are short of laws. The laws are there. Mm -hmm. But what we need is that goodwill. Put the laws into practice. Uh, for maybe if the president helped and assented to the minimum wage bill, it would help most of the journalists to earn some money from their bosses. Mm -hmm. But as it is now, uh, you go for work, you don't know what will happen the next day, whether you'll be paid or not. Uh, our contracts are neither here nor there, so people don't know what they are working for, they don't have appointment letters. I think we can do better if all these are put in place. But uh, for the issue of the security agencies, I think just beyond the football that was played last, last time, mm. we need serious dialogue, and this dialogue should be, be, should be between the security agencies and the people who are beaten, not our bosses who sit in the SEs and go, go make decisions on our behalf, because they don't know what to go through. No boss has ever been beaten. 
no boss has ever been tear gassed, so they don't understand what we go through. They should leave matters with the field, the field journalists behind mm -hmm. the field journalists. Gamma Nama will be Gamma Zimate, who know not what to let it to run about the work of Yabusim. Kubanga being a bit too seco, to put it to me go, even to be a Fabio no Nedua. I tell what the Kokuba to possess Gamma Zimatula Banti to Tony Gizibo, Kubanga, to Samu Chingi, Nanga to Sasuvachi. We talk it up World Press Freedom Day, those are Buryomi and the Sanyo and the Media Namodi. They want to Uganda to join at the Media Namodi. Ngemuzemula <laughs> But Sinka Garawa police na yavu deyo kuyoza yoza vanda maori le na dalaba reporters, uh, ba journalists sababu vayo ukolo muri muguawe na abe ba zolo muri mumuru njugu mukola wakati wakusoma zewo kwa mani ba mukumbwe ba vade ba 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 tuuntuza uh, ba lala ba tisibwa tisibwa mukokole muri muguawe uh, no kwe yongera yoso. Get to go to the police to a garo granty and cola to a young girl can use and cola wakati what police never van nama would it? Champ Zamrujinti, Oxomozebo, Quarum of Yokuron, or Via Oxomozebo, Tetunava could Damukfuna, Misango Wakati Wavan Nama would it and the police Okuvira Dara, Mumwezi, Ogoksatu, Guacuna, Katu, to not to remove Guacutano. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, we believe that brutality for journalists has to stop. Well, let's go for a quick break. We shall come back with more news. Welcome back for the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know. Now, in our international news today, the Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Tshisekedi has declared a state of siege in violence hit eastern provinces on the mineral rich Ituri and North Chivo after hundreds of people were killed and many displaced. Let's have the report. Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi made the declaration during his visit to the French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris last Tuesday and warned him about the armed group issue in his homeland. Announcing Shisekedi's decision late on Friday, government spokesman Patrick Miaya said that the objective is to swiftly end the insecurity which is killing their fellow citizens in the part of the country on a daily basis. Kambale Msavali, an analyst at Center for Research on the Congo Kinshasa, said it looked increasingly likely the government would send in more troops to the two affected regions where government troops and United Nations peacekeepers have struggled to contain the violence. An estimated 122 armed groups of varying sizes operate in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, many a legacy of catastrophic regional wars in the 1990s. 
Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, Somalia's President Mohamed Abdullahi on Saturday reopened talks to hold elections as soon as possible, a move welcomed by opposition and raising the specter of further deadly violence. Our reporter has more. In a short speech to members of parliament, broadcast live on television, Somalia's President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed called for a negotiation solution to the ongoing political crisis, abandoning a two-year extension of his presidential term adopted on 12 April. He also designated his prime minister as responsible for the organization of the elections, thus acceding to one of the main demands of the opposition to break the deadlock. The extension of the presidential term on 12 April triggered the fury of the opposition to the point of degenerating into armed clashes last Sunday in Mogadishu between government forces and pro-opposition leaving three dead. The agreement calls for elections to be held under an indirect system similar to the one adopted in 2017 where special delegates chosen by the multiple clan leaders elect parliamentarians who then vote for the president. Now, Chadian opposition politician Yaya Dilo supports a peaceful transition of power and talks arranged by the ruling military council with opposition camps in their proclaimed spirit of inclusion. Our reporter has more. Yaya Dilo Jerry say that for them it is hard to accept that the new regime is taking power in the name of the rule of law, adding first with a very difficult choice. They have made a careful decision to preserve the stability of the country by not calling on supporters to protest and allowing the country to live in peace. He added that they demand that there be an inclusive dialogue, including not only political actors, but also trade unions, human rights organizations, the diaspora, so that together they can shape and reshape the new Chad that they all want. Jerry said that he fears the new authorities could seek to use state institutions such as the Electoral Commission and Supreme Court to hold on to power in Chad. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, six supporters of former Ivorian President Laurent Gabo, including former party officials, landed in Abidjan from Ghana under the auspices of the United Nations High Commissioners for Refugees in agreement with the Ivorian President in the name of national reconciliation. Our reporter has more. The political appeasement gestures multiplied on Friday in Cote d'Ivoire, where exiled supporters of ex-president Laurent Gbagbo returned after 10 years of exile at the same time as the release of 100 prisoners accused of violence related to the 2020 presidential election was announced. At the same time as the release of 100 prisoners accused of violence related to the 2020 presidential election was announced. The exiles, who include former budget minister Justin Katinan Kohn and Laurent Bagbo's young sister Jeanette Kudu, were greeted at the airport of dozens of activists kept at a safe place distance by police as well as journalists. Among the returning exiles in the Mana Picas, who made a name for himself by snatching from a member of the Electoral Commission the results by region that he was reading on live television, which would have given Alassane Ouattara the victory over Laurent Bagbo in the 2010 presidential election. Well, the new Nigerian president, Bazoum Mohamed, has made school education his priority throughout his outlined vision for the coming years to the various actors of Nigerian education system and technical and financial partners. We have more. President Bazoum Mohamed said that despite efforts by the various regimes over the last three decades, poor governance, inadequate infrastructure, and a decline in the level and quality of education, are among the ills that plague the sector. A teacher by trade, the new president of the Republic, Mohamed Bazoum, has made the rebuilding of the Nigerian education system a priority. The head of state has a project to upgrade the educator's body, teachers, as he recently stated before teaching establishment partners. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now let's go for a quick break. We should come back with our business news. <laughs> Well, 
welcome back for the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know. Now, in our business news today, recent flooding from the rising waters of Lake Tanganyika at the port of Bujumbura in Burundi since February 2021 has affected 8,000 families with around 2,000 people displaced in lakeside communities. We have the report. The details come from an April 25th report by the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, where areas around Bugarama, Kanyenkoku, Muhuta, Nyanzalak, Gatumba, Rukaram, Kivenga, Gisho and Kabondo in the province of Bujumbura Ruru, roughly 12 kilometers outside the city, have been affected more. The lake's levels have been slowly rising since February 2021 and stood at 776.45 meters above sea level. As of April 19, as on that night, torrential rains caused the banks of the Ruzizi River to overflow. Local experts have warned the media that if the lake's levels exceed 777 meters, areas around Bujumbura port will also see flooding. In addition, strong winds and landslides have also affected hundreds of people in other parts of the country, the majority of whom are displaced. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, away from business, in Africa Today Health, Nigeria will restrict access to its territory to all foreign travelers who have stayed in Brazil, India, and Turkey over the past two weeks in order to limit the spread of the coronavirus, according to health authorities. We have the report. Sunday's statement issued by Boss Mustafa, chairman of the Pandemic Presidential Steering Committee, comes in light of the urgent spike in COVID-19 cases and the believed even more contagious virus variants in the concerned countries. The Anti-COVID-19 Committee said it made the decision based on a risk assessment taking into account epidemiology and the prevalence of variants of concern and average passenger volume between Nigeria and each country, among other indicators. In addition, any passenger arriving in Nigeria will now have to present a negative test for COVID-19 less than 72 hours old instead of 96 hours old. India has reported over 300,000 daily cases for more than 10 straight days. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, in Africa Today Sports, Kampala Capital City Authority Football Club outwitted Maroons 2-1 during the first leg of the Stanbic Bank Uganda Cup on the round of 16 stage at the Prison Stadium in Lazira on Sunday, 2nd May 2021. Let's have the report. The two goals for cases arrived from rather old sources of unfamiliar personalities, defenders Abat Achai and Hassan Jura. Achai scored the opener on the opening quarter hour, then Jura doubled the lead in the 67th minute with a well-struck penalty following a handball call inside the goal area. KCCA will host the Uganda prison's founded side at the m Omond Stadium, Lugogo, on Wednesday, 5th May, 2021. Meanwhile, Wakso Giants humiliated the FIFA big entity Tolo United 5-1 at the Kabaka Chabago Stadium on the same day. Katende Chabasinga reporting. Africa. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, before we end the bulletin, let's have a recap of our top stories. The National Environment Authority appeals to the people to avoid exposing themselves to pollution. And the Federation for Democratic Change cautions government on unnecessary borrowing and unclear accountability. And Bobby Wine Bradley's opposition in new pre-reform fight. And in Somalia, elections to hold as President Famajo drops term extension. 
And in Africa Today Sports, KCC scored two vital away goals past Maroon in first leg Uganda Cup round of 16. Well, that was the news on TV Africa. Thank you so much for joining us from where we started from. We still encourage you to go and have your vaccination as required by the health authorities. It is TV Africa, the right to know. This is Africa, and that was the news.